What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View, the true stories of professional overseas basketball. I am your host, the one and only Erica McCall, aka Bird McCall. And I am a fifth year, just finished up my fifth year with the Washington Mystics. I have played overseas for four years in Hungary, and I'm so excited to bring this episode to you. This is episode four, and with this episode, I wanted to bring down a special co-host because we got a lot of love and feedback from our very first episode, and along with the topic we'll be talking about later on, I think that she'll be absolutely perfect for it. So I'm going to bring on the one and only Sydney Weiss. Sid, tell everybody who you are again and what you're doing right now. Bird, first of all, thank you so much for having me back. Uh, it's always an honor and a privilege to speak with you. Um, so just like you, just finished up my fifth year uh, with the Mystics, and I am in between seasons right now, so I'm waiting to go to Italy in about a week, and then I will be doing my overseas season out there, which I'm really excited about. So now I'm just at home hanging out, talking with you beautiful people. Thank you. You know, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people gave us a lot of great feedback. They said they loved us, loved our episode. So I was like, man, I got to have Sid on for co-host. And we talked about this like before this show even started, like Sid was me with me and I was like trying to hum up these ideas as to why I wanted to start this podcast. And I was telling her that for both of us, wherever we go, people are always asking us what's overseas basketball like, what's the food like, the culture like, the language like. So I was like, I got to bring a podcast so people can get educated on all this stuff. And that's my reason for bringing Bird's Eye View, the true stories of professional overseas basketball, because everyone wants to know what that is. Okay, <laughs> so, within, <laughs> so within each show, um, we'll have a different topic. And so we went through already several topics for my first episode was with Sid, was with basketball. Episode two was about overseas relationships with Sai and Jess Gorey. Episode three was with my lovely sister, Dewana Bonner, and went over motherhood while overseas. And so for this episode, episode four, I knew I was going to have this episode from the very beginning. It's about how we live out our faith while being overseas. And when I was asking Sid, who would be a perfect person to bring on the show for this episode, she said, Nia Coffee. And I said, bingo. And so what I said, Sid. You literally said bingo. <laughs> bingo. That's it. No, she's a perfect person for it. So here we have on the episode, Nia. Nia, welcome on. How are you doing today? You guys, thanks for having me. I'm doing great now that I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> um and thanks for thinking of me Sid I feel so honored so I really appreciate it Nia's the sweetest soul Isn't I'm just she? so excited to have her here she's so sweet well let me get everybody a little rundown of who Nia is I mean she really needs no explanation because she's amazing on and off the court but you know for people who don't know so which should be few let me break down who you are and what you accomplished okay so Nia's a current member she also finished her fifth year um in league with the Los gang. Angeles Sparks mm -hmm. yes sir <laughs> yes. yes um none of us made the playoffs it's just hey all why we are sitting <laughs> on this podcast today so it's greater than b-ball god is good god, god is great good. god is great well Nia I don't know if you know um I was looking up some some stats about you and this was your best season yet you improved in every stat line I mean like everything from points rebounds assists steals minutes play like you killed it this season so congrats on that superstar thank you I I appreciate it, it wasn't that hard granted that I didn't play my first four years so it's kind of easy to beat all those categories out but look we just we're Hell ready you. when our name is called we're ready when our name is called <laughs> me that too is that is the key <laughs> this yeah. is my best season yet too you know when you play more things things you produce more. Go. Yeah, yeah exactly exactly things happen so blessings in that okay like we talked about um Nia also finished up her fifth year which means she was a part of our same 2017 WNBA draft we were all there together mm. she was drafted to the San Antonio Stars that's kind of dating you because they're not a Wow, they're not they're even there anymore. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, crazy? No like, with you us. Don't feel old and like you're like, oh, you play with the San Antonio Stars? Like, who? What? <laughs> That's how you know. Man. Ugh. Good Oops. times. Um, and so <laughs> before she was drafted, uh, she played with the Northwestern. What's your mascot? Wildcats. Oh, Wildcats. I was say the Wildcats. <laughs> Wildcats everywhere. Yes. Oh, boy. She played with the Northwestern Wildcats, and she was a member of the All Big Team, All Big Ten First Team honors 
for four years, four seasons straight. Bam, bam, bam. Four like, out of four. Four out of four. Like she was dope. And another fun fact, your coach, Coach McCune, was our coach for the USA World University Games team. Was that, what year was that? Was that, two, that our sophomore year? That was our junior year. Our, our going into our junior year. Okay. Wow. Yeah, 2015, yeah, that's yeah, right. Going to junior year. Yeah, so wow. the connection's all there. It's oh, all gosh, there right now. World. And of course, we're overseas show, so I got to talk about your overseas accolades. You played in Turkey, Australia, Poland, and Israel, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And you were a member of the All-Australian Women's National Basketball League first team in 2019. Mm. she said mm, I didn't know that I did not <laughs> she's a baller but okay thanks she's a for baller. letting mm -hmm. me know <laughs> and you were Israeli league regular season champion back in 2018 where did you find this I didn't know that as well <laughs> yep Fun Mia, you, you experienced this this was your life <laughs> she's just looking she just doesn't know how good she is no, that's all wow. it's just like superstar when you're done somewhere you kind of just Got to scramble back. <laughs> like you don't really look back. So, Understandable. Wow. Yes, that's truly what it is. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a superstar on your own. So thank you, Nia, for being on. And so before we like to do the interview, I like to do a little icebreaker, you know, and the theme of the icebreaker is always the theme of what, you know, the topic is of the day. So this one's a faith-based game. And so the game is called, I didn't even tell you this, it because I wanted to see your reaction. It's called Jesus Walks. <laughs> this, Do you know this, game? this is why I can't be on every single show with you because I can't handle being around you any longer than I need to be. But that was great, Bird. I commend I you. I thought it was a puns, good, so. I thought it was a good title. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay, <laughs> I'll ask you the first two questions and then Sid will ask you the last two. Okay, so these okay. are just fun. These are just fun. Just help us get loose, you know, get ready for the interview. All right. All right. So if you could bring any celebrity to have dinner with you in Jesus, who would it be? Ooh, mm. Any celebrity. Any celebrity. Oh my goodness. There's so many. Hmm. Or you want a dinner I party would say, Jesus. right. <laughs> I'm trying to think outside of sports but maybe this is I don't know why this is coming to me but I would say LeBron James Ooh, yes just with like his influence and what he's doing now and like how could he take that to the next level with God like what could that look like even more than what he's already done that's interesting everybody we need to get LeBron on the line because <laughs> there needs to be dinner plans with Nia, Jesus, and LeBron. What's our so favorite book called? Sit Jesus Calling. Jesus, hello, Jesus. We have a dinner date for you. Get LeBron <laughs> to the next level of his influence. Well, that's a great yeah, answer because mine happen. was really shallow. Oh, it was Beyonce. In just because. Oh. No, Beyonce. not at all. We all need some Jesus. It's okay. That's great. No, that's a great answer, Bird. Thank you. All right, second question. If you could explore a country with God anywhere in the world, where would it be? Israel. Nice. And you played there. So how was that experience? I know. You know, my rookie year, I was just trying to get my life together. So I didn't really do. do a lot of exploring. Um, I did go to the Dead Sea. I went to Jerusalem and a few other places, but I would have definitely gone to like the Jordan River. I would have done like, deeper tours like in the old city Jerusalem all that stuff I would have just liked that history along with the ride that I was on for mm -hmm. sure Israel um and then I actually played there the beginning of the year but it was COVID so I couldn't do any of that um so I would I have to go back to Israel and just you know just do it again yeah cool Sid you played in Israel right I sure did. I was there actually the same time as Nia this past season. Um, mm -hmm. And we were supposed to link up for lunch, but I texted her and I said, Nia, I'm tired. I can't, I and can't I make it to lunch today. <laughs> and it'd be she like that. Very sometimes. understanding. Very I got about 10 of those messages this year. <laughs> don't expose me like this bird. I don't like to be a flake, but I am for sure a flake. <laughs> and that's it. It's who I am. Truly. I am. Truly. Yeah. See, so you got the next ones. All right, Nia, prepare your mind and soul for this one. All right. If Jesus played basketball, what position would he play? 
point guard because he's telling us where to go, what to do, how to do it, when it, all of it. Point guard. He's my point guard. Yes. He, Jesus is Nia Coffey's point guard, everybody. Yes. Put it in the history books. Yes. <laughs> Facilitator. Yeah. The point guard always knows where to go, the plays, and I'm, you know, there's always that I time feel- when you forget to play. Yeah, and I feel like point guards are always like three steps ahead mm-hmm. have of the rest of the team. So that fits Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that, yes. fits, that fits the mold, I would say. <laughs> I think that's right. Definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's a good that, I, I couldn't see him being a center. <laughs> I don't know if I could see <laughs> I, I could see Jesus being a little power forward. I, yeah. He's just so, yeah. you know, strong. Wrong. so versatile you know? yes yeah. like a point forward we're gonna go with point, point forward. forward all yes. right there we go lebron <laughs> which is why another reason he would be good they need to connect yes wow i'm getting emotional already <laughs> we're gonna move on to the next question before we get okay. too in depth okay. here okay okay now we're gonna transition to if god was your actual coach what advice do you think he would give you wow what advice I think he would give me? Mm-hmm. Ooh, um, just to be you. Don't have to be anything or anyone else. Mm-hmm. Just be you. Yeah, that he's given us. I mean, seriously, he's all he's given us all different gifts and talents and abilities for a reason. So he doesn't want us to be anyone else or try to be anything other than what he's already given us. So. Snaps. That was poetry. It is the truth. It is the actual truth. Yeah. Dope. Gosh, well, man, man, that like that warmed it. That that was perfect. That warmed us up for the interview. I feel like I'm warmed up. I feel like I'm. I'm ready to go. To sweat. <laughs> Gosh. The ice has been broken. Phone ringing. Hold yeah. on a second. Keep go. Please. Take care. <laughs> All right. So I'll start off the interview question with. Nia, just just tell us about your faith journey and Mm. how that's been throughout your whole life and how has basketball, you know, played a role in that journey? For sure. And let me know if I'm being too detailed because I know we got to get to some things. But Mm. um, I would first start off in saying like when I was a kid, my family, we did go to church. But once basketball started up, because there's three of us, I have an older sister and younger brother, we're all two years apart you know, basketball on the weekends, we're traveling, all the stuff, like, it was kind of hard to get to church, so we, we didn't really go that much, Um, but then when I got to Northwestern, I actually dedicated my life to God, Um, but I didn't really know what that meant, so I just, you know, I said, yes, I want to live for God, I believe in Jesus, let's do this, but I didn't really know what that looked like, I didn't know what that meant, and, like, college, you're just, you're just, like, you're trying to figure stuff out, you know, you're just trying to survive a little bit as a student mm-hmm. athlete. So, you know, my, I didn't understand, but until, it wasn't until my rookie year um, overseas that I really had to look myself in the mirror. I'm like, what does this actually mean to look for God? What does it actually mean for me to want to serve him and glorify him? And how do I do that? Not only just on Sundays, but like every day and in my everyday life, no matter what that is. Um, and I think it's very interesting to happen overseas because just from what I've heard and what I've seen, it could be isolating. It could be lonely and you can turn to other things or you could turn to God. So that's kind of happened uh, to me when I was in Israel. So that's kind of, you know, where I really started my journey. And then it's been a roller coaster ever <laughs> since, but it's a good ride to be on. But yeah, it's been, you know, but we're doing good though. So yeah, that's we're how I would here. sum it up. We are still here. We're still here. We're still here. (laughs) Yeah. No, I had a similar experience to you just in my journey with with God and figuring out who he like truly is. Like college was like kind of like my groundbreaking moment. Like we had AIA, which is Athletes in Action, FCA, Fellowship Christian Athletes, I believe that is. And like that's when I like really like established my own relationship with God rather than what my family had or just me going to church on you know every Sunday and so college was like college makes or break you <laughs> like what? like you really figure out who you are in college and you know that's when I really discover like my faith and reading on my own and asking questions and realizing it's okay to ask questions because I think many times people tell us like we shouldn't question God 
And I've learned just in my own experience that like, it's okay to ask questions because that's how we develop deeper relationships with, with him and, you know, with our, you know, fellow loving God lovers around us. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. I think, um, college is one stage of life. I know when I left college, I was like, I have all the answers. (laughs) I know it all. I've been through it all. And then when you go overseas or even, I mean, our first year in the W, our first season in the W, I feel like that's such a blur because you are transitioning from everything you've learned from college, how your faith has been put into action there. And then you're just thrown into a whole different level, whole different ball game. And then you go overseas and you sort of stop. I feel like life sort of slows down when you, you finally make it overseas. And like Nia said, you have that moment of, okay, who am I? And what am I going to pursue? You have so much downtime that you can go so many different directions. And I think it's amazing that each of us have had our own journeys throughout our childhood, high school, college, and then overseas. I feel like it sort of takes off and takes a form and a life of its own because of the ownership that we wanted to place on putting Christ as the priority and keeping that consistent amidst all these other changes that were going to be thrown at us. If you're going to different countries, if you're being traded in the W, if you're going, if you have a job in the W, like if you have a job overseas, like there's so many things and that's just basketball. And then you want to add life into that. (laughs) The one consistent piece I feel like is God. And that has helped me immensely amidst all of the different life lessons that have been presented to us, transitions, even in between seasons, like we are right now, it's a moment to sort of take a step back, breathe and reset in Christ before we're thrown into that next season. Mm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. No, I was, (laughs) no, I was going to say, because we talk about how we go from these like transitions from the league to overseas. And we talk about that in basketball and it's it's hard on its own. It's a completely different style of basketball, but like faith wise for me, when I go overseas, like I love going overseas because I feel at so much peace, the downtime that we get, the peace and quiet that we get, the focus, like the mental focus that we have overseas is completely different from when we're in the States Mm -hmm. and everything life is hectic. Like I still haven't mastered how to keep a consistent faith when I'm in the States. So mm-hmm. Nia, do you, do you struggle with that? Or do you have like ways of transitioning? Like, is it easy for you? No, I agree with everything you just said. Um, when people used to say they're lonely overseas, I thrive because I just spend all my time and I'm focusing and I have the energy and the mental capacity just to focus on going in my faith. So I just feel at my best, even if like my overseas experience, isn't that great? I am great. Um, But then, like you said, when I get back to the States, I usually start off like I'm on fire, I'm good. But then like there's a midpoint in the season where you get a little fatigued, get a little tired and like a distraction comes and it start drifting away a little bit. And by the time the end of the season, I'm like, wait, where is this feeling that I have when I'm overseas? Like, why can't I hold that, hold on to that when I'm in the States? Exactly. And um, so I did that my first four years, I kept going through that cycle. I'm like, wait, what is going on? So I, I was praying that after the bubble, we all need a lot of prayer <laughs> after the bubble, but- <laughs> Repent, amen, Lord. Look, I was just praying after the bubble. I was like, Lord, if you want me to play in the WNBA again, let me know, like, I'm going to follow mm-hmm. wherever you want. But then also, if you provide that, help me to stay with you the entire season. That is my goal. I don't care if I play. I don't care if I, like, help me stay with you. And I was watching a sermon by Pastor Michael Todd. I forgot what series it was, but he was basically saying, it will be your best year if it is your best year spiritually. Ooh. So he was like, oh, it was anchored. And he was like, you just have to stay anchored in Jesus no matter what happens, if you stay anchored, you'll be fine. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to commit to that. John 15, you already know, said it. that is my scripture of the year. Like, so I'm just going to say John 15, four, and it's basically saying, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 
So it's basically saying if we don't remain in God, like we're not going to be fruitful in the way that's going to be lasting. So staying on the vine, we got to stay with the Lord, to stay connected to the source and you'll be good. And I did that last year. That's my proudest achievement of this year. I got through the season still angered to him. And I felt great, even though like we were disappointed, we didn't make it to the playoffs or we had so many injuries. It was really stressful. I was at peace. Okay. And you can't buy that. I was good. So yeah, that's just how I feel about that. I'm just still super happy. And I'm like, Lord, you did that. You brought me through. Like I did nothing. Like that was all him. I was like, thank you. Cause I needed that. I was like, I can't do that a fifth year in a row. I just couldn't, I just couldn't. No. So that would wow. be, and that's, I feel like there's each season. And this is a question for you, Nia. There's, I feel like God teaches us specific oh, lessons each 100%. season. What do you feel like this past season overseas, that little bit overseas that you had going into the W, yes. what was that main lesson for you? Surrender mm. daily, but surrender daily. overall. Um, Cause I feel like as athletes, you know, like we were taught, like, if you work hard, you're going to get the results. And I'm like, that's not always true. No, <laughs> it's, it's not always true. So like unlearning certain things and then relearning things in a way that actually, you know, is natural to this world and reality, like we all are hard workers, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get to where we want to be, which can sound weird, but just surrendering whatever expectations, whatever goals I had and see if they're aligned with God's will. Because at the end of the day, like if my goals aren't in line with his will, well, what does, what ultimately matters? And it's his will. And I'm like, am I going to surrender enough? And I'm, if, am I going to be obedient enough and trusting him enough to follow his will for his, for his greater good, not necessarily for me. So that was hard to swallow when I first came to that. Cause I'm like, well, my goals are still good, but his are just, <laughs> better and like he knows everything he has a purpose so his will is going to lead us into that and it's better than anything we could ever imagine but you just have to surrender that and trust that and no matter what it looks like you just have to constantly surrender and that's hard that's so hard. hard yeah so hard wow um Sid I didn't know when you bring a neon that you were gonna be bring a prophet uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> this is the content that I was I knew yes. was in store for us. A Bingo. <laughs> Man, I am like, I am just getting I'm rained like, shoot, on. I should be taking notes right now. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm, I'm back a, from church, but am I in not? A, in a, oh it, today is Sunday. Know. Today is Sunday. Today it's no coincidence surrender. we had this podcast on Sunday. No, man, like everything you're speaking is like speaking to my soul right now. I was actually just reading a devotional and we were talking about, um, alignment your you know your vision aligned with God's and he was saying that if your vision is aligned with God's you'll feel like a sense of passion a sense of purpose a, mm. a sense of peace and I was like oh like because sometimes that doesn't happen like you have the, all these goals and you like it's like a push to get to your goals like you don't feel mm -hmm. like you're enjoying the process mm -hmm. and that like clicked for me I'm like man I got to start realigning myself I need to start praying more speaking of what God wants for me rather than what I just want for me. And that happens a lot overseas because overseas, your goal is to ball out. Ball out, win a championship. Like that's always a goal. Like sometimes it's not even, sometimes you're not going to be on a good team. You're like, I just want to ball out. And like, that's not necessarily the goal that God may want for you. You, he may want you to like become a better leader, yes. to become a better teammate. You know, how can you reach to the people discipleship outside, you know, mm. of, your, of your circle? And so yeah. that's what I'm trying to learn more as I go overseas. How can I be a better person rather than just a better basketball player? Mm, that's good. Yeah, I think I think that sums it up perfectly because I know like probably I can't speak for everybody here, but my first year overseas, I was like, I'm about to go out there and get buckets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think something that has been a consistent theme for me throughout the professional journey has been, I feel like Christ has humbled me mm -hmm. in different ways each season yeah. in really good ways and necessary ways that leads me deeper into his care, into his arms. And like Bird was saying, each season I have made such great friends 
with my mm. teammates. And at first, like, like I said, when I went to Australia my first year, I was like, I'm going there for four months and I'm out. <laughs> and then I was, I had no intentions of like really getting to know people. I was like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. I'm going to get extra shots up. Like such a college mindset, you know? Yes. And I, <laughs> I shifted to, because of the people and that's God at work through others. Mm-hmm. They, they were such amazing people. And that's been the case each country that I've been in where I had, I, as we, we were created to connect with others yes. deeply. Mm-hmm. And even though we are only overseas for a couple months, and then who knows if we're going to be returning to that same team, to that same country, I, it's, it's been amazing to see how God leads us to the right people with purpose in each season and how they pour into us mm-hmm. and make it feel like a little piece of home or a little piece of heaven as we are, as we're trying to still get buckets and do our job and and do really well at that, but it makes it a lot more purposeful and fulfilling being away from home, being away from our loved ones, when you can connect with those teammates and even people from the W that you might not know because they're not on your team, but they're in your country. Mm -hmm. And there's been so much purpose in all of those moments and all those relationships that I've been so grateful for away apart from just the basketball side of it overseas. Definitely. Yeah. I was thinking about like different WMA players. I mean, Rashawn and Gray, Gray, Gray. Gray. I think, did you play with her too Nia, before? No, no. Um, okay. I don't know. She's, she's a, um, what are those people? N- nomads. They just keep moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's always her. on the go <laughs> always on the go but anyway she played in year in, in Hungary and um she gave me like after this like game we played she gave me like this gift and it was like what came with like a little bible verse and like she gave me like a cute little pair of earrings but like that like meant so much to me because we struggle so much on our own and for someone to be able to connect with you on that spiritual level it like it could change the way you think about the rest of the season Mm -hmm. just knowing that someone else is like having the same struggles as you they're going through the same stuff and yet we still praise the same God and we're all you know trying to get through this together so Mm -hmm. like that leads me to like let's talk about slumps (laughs) let's talk about basketball slumps and how we get through them especially overseas because you it's a different, it's a different battle. Just being, having an overseas slump here, at least you can connect with your family and, you know, we have your Mm -hmm. teammates, but this is, this is different. So how do you get through your, your slumps overseas? Mm, That is good. Um, I would say I just take it one day at a time. I don't put any pressure on me just to figure everything out, like right then in that moment and just give myself time and like take a second and like really go through like, okay, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Um, Like, why do you think I'm not performing or what? Like try to get to the root of it and like Mm -hmm. have no judgments on it and like understand that it happens, but like how can we be proactive in giving yourself grace, but also being proactive in like, okay, if I have the capacity right now, if I have the energy, let's take one step forward today, that's it. So I just give myself time, a lot of time. If that means like I have to disconnect a little bit more because I'm, I'm an introvert. So I just love to have my alone time to recharge. If that means, okay, just watching one of my favorite sermons, yeah. taking notes, maybe notes that I haven't like noticed before or going over my God resume of how like, I've been down in the past and how he's brought me through or look back on those moments. And I'm like, let's pause there. Use that. Oh yeah. What's a God resume. Oh, a God. Yes. I think everyone should have a God resume. You literally write down every single thing that you are aware of that God, only God could have brought you through or that he has done. Mm -hmm. And like, when I do that and I look and I'm in a, let's say I'm in a bad place or I'm not in a place where I want to be now, I'll look at my God resume. I'm like, wow, in this season, I didn't realize what he was doing, but hindsight 2020, I can realize I needed that season to be where I am now. Mm-hmm. So then that just gives me courage to know that this season I'm in is giving me purpose and it's not going to last forever. And maybe I'm going through this so he can prepare me for the blessing he wants to give me or that I can help others and serve others and like 
relate and have empathy in those places so that we can come through this together. So the God resume, 100%, I recommend. Yeah. Bird, I'm speechless. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I don't want to say anything else. I just want, oh, to keep, I just literally wrote down God resume. Like I, I just, have a pen right now. I'm writing. I just let you speak. Down. I just let you yes. speak. But man, that's beautiful. Wow. Sid, man. Bingo. Yeah, Every time. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, that's, I love, because I think in those slumps, it's so easy to lose sight. Mm-hmm. And a God resume brings it back to the forefront of how yes. he's been faithful and it, it helps us regain that perspective. So that's something I'm definitely gonna keep in mind when I go overseas this season to put it put pen to paper and really make it real of God is at work still. And this mm-hmm. is how he's been in, at work up until this point. And there's no way he's gonna abandon that now. Right. And that's, that's so good, Nia. God rest mm, That's so it. good. Like, I hope there's some people out there who are struggling because I know there's a couple of people out there who are play overseas basketball right now and who are listening in like that they can take that advice take that in like I think that you went through so many of your experiences to speak on this podcast today and share what you just shared and I think it's going to help so many people it's it's helping me already just listening to it so I appreciate that and and I know there's a lot of people that go through struggles overseas and I think we all talked about pen to paper I think um journaling and writing down what you're going through has been so helpful to me and to others just seeing it rather than just thinking about it like it's a completely different experience and journaling has been huge for me I don't journal when I'm in WNBA and that's a part of my cycle that I need to get that's past to know that's good to know bird <laughs> but I need to journal at all times and I think it's just a, a beautiful way for you to be able to connect through your struggles through God. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, Nia, man, just <laughs> thank you for being on today. <laughs> thank you for having me. This was such a blessing to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited for when this podcast is released for others, but my gosh, this was a blessing oh for me goodness. today. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. One last question. Mm-hmm. Let's just drop some, let's just drop some more gems. I just want to hear you speak, really. (laughs) But first time, first time player going overseas, male or female, what advice do you give them? Hmm. Um, Definitely stay rooted in your faith. Stay rooted in your faith, no matter where you're at. Just be consistent with it. Even if it's just a devotional every day or a sermon every Sunday, just be consistent, just grow with it. Like give it time. Like you'll just see how it's like feeding you. You'll feel that and it'll be organic and natural and you'll grow in your faith. Um, And then also understand that there's gonna be pressure in different areas when it comes to like our performance, but our worth isn't based on our performance. It isn't based on how much you're making. It's not based on how many points you score. It's your worth is in, it's in God. And maybe don't put so much pressure on yourself to try to be the it person or whatever. Just be you. You have what it takes. You have the job. Like if it, if the job didn't come to you, like if it came to you, you're, you know, you're able to fulfill that job, you know? So just be you. And um, I don't know. I think those are the top two things for me. God coach. My God coach just came out of Nia. Just for you, everybody. <laughs> Look, so my simple. My soul. Oh my goodness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for this this beautiful interview. Like I've been blessed, and I'm sure there's gonna be many people commenting back saying how blessed they were listening to this. I know my family's gonna enjoy listening to this. I told them like, wait till you guys hear the episode I'm about to record right <laughs> now. You guys are gonna freaking love it, especially you, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening glory helen Helen. shout out to you (laughs) but okay let's transition out of the interview into something a bit more well it could be heavier sheesh you never know we're going to go into the story of the day (laughs) and this is where every guest comes on and they tell us their wildest overseas story you guys know about my hungarian boyfriend many people after (laughs) listening Hearing the, the feedback of you guys seem to love, you know, the, the update on my Hungarian boyfriend. 
Um, I actually still follow him on Instagram and he's doing well. He's playing in the first league division and I'm so proud of him. Okay. So shout he's out to G. Well. Your Edda is so, so <laughs> proud of you. Uh, so Nia, <laughs> forget about my boyfriend. What crazy <laughs> overseas story have you experienced? Tell the, give me, the, I need all the details. Like just, just break it down for us because yes. you get some crazy stories and I want to hear yours. Look. I love Australia, but Adelaide, Australia, January 1st, 2000, was it 18? No, 19 at 7.32 AM. This is how traumatizing this was for me, you guys. You have all the dates and, and time, exact time. Yes. So I'm sleeping and like, I'm an early riser. So I'm like, oh, it's time to get up. I'm waking up. I'm like, something don't feel right. I my eyes are so close, but I'm like, something is off. All of a sudden, so I'm like, okay, I'm waking up. There is a huntsman spider on my door. No. The side, <laughs> bigger than my hand, a huntsman spider. A huntsman spider. Have you seen those? You, you need to Google a picture right now. A huntsman Everyone, spider bigger than right my now. hand. Bigger than my hand. And I don't know what went over my mind. I just start screaming. I just scream. What else can I do? I'm, I'm not the brightest when I wake up. I need, you know, I need to get some water in my system. I need to wake up something. <laughs> I just scream and thank the Lord that I was not living alone because I don't know what would have happened if I was alone, but my Australian teammate came in with a Tupperware little bowl. <laughs> she got a paper thing, just got it and just left. I was like, oh, that was it. That was it. This spider could have had me for breakfast. And she just <laughs> hopped in like it was nothing. And she's like, oh, I'm gonna go release it outside. I was like, release it? Release. No, you need to go to the next city and release it. Don't put it on the block. What if he comes back? Whatever. I didn't sleep after that. I think like I had a month and a half. I didn't sleep because I just knew there was, where was his family? Were they in the room? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I slept with the lights on. I prayed over that room. I was like, look, I need some help. Splash some holy water. I, man, those are real. I don't think people understand those spiders are real. I have, I have multiple questions, but I'm just going to oh, okay. ask one. Go for it. Yeah. How did it get into the home without <laughs> being detected? Yes. Um, to well, this day, that open. is, that is an unknown because I don't, I'm in Australia. I'm not keeping my windows open. That's not an option. Maybe through the Absolutely fence. Not. I don't know. I don't know. The, the spider can answer that. You guys have some, there's some weird, not weird, but just different creatures. I mean, did you get like, was there ever a time like when you were just going for a stroll and you just saw some kangaroos trying to box up with you? I feel like they're always, <laughs> always feisty. Um, yeah. Like if you're driving in the country, you just see wild kangaroos just mm their best life in the fields and <laughs> maybe some koalas sometimes you see koalas it's not common at least where I was but you could see some koalas in a in a tree but this is the thing about Australia oh you go were you able to go into the water because like were there sharks mm. and crocs where you were at or like because where I was there were crocs so like you couldn't go into the water yeah you couldn't go in Adelaide you could um, but I was still kind of freaked out. But the first day that I did, of course, there was a like a shark watch. So I immediately left. Nope. I'm like, that nope. was enough. Nope. <laughs> That's enough. Like, That'll do. It's okay. But I Australia is great, but I think those bugs and animals can just evolve over time because there's no winter to kill them off. So that they're just like advancing every year. <laughs> so that's why they're so big. That's my theory. Are these spiders like, poisonous? No. This is a thing. People actually like them in their home because they kill the other bugs. I'm like, no, no so bugs. They're pets. Mm. Spy Might pets. Well. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe this. I would have burned down the apartment <laughs> and left the team. <laughs> I said I was going home. But it didn't. <laughs> so you're, didn't on come that, you're, you're on the right track because how oh. do you come back from that? You don't. Mm -mm. I'm, I think of that at least once a month, to be honest. That is what propelled Nia to be on the first team, all WNBL team, <laughs> was the spider. Look. That was, that's what did it. Yeah. And you haven't been back to Australia since? 
I haven't. <laughs> Key in the story. <laughs> I have not. I would go back, mm -hmm. but I would need I would need a lot of courage. But yeah, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Wow! Wow! That was, that was a, a thoroughly entertaining story. One one of my faves that I've heard. I've heard about those those spiders, and I cannot imagine being in the room. I'm so dramatic as is. <laughs> So, you know, sure I just, are. I scream for a little anything. I'm not even afraid of bugs like that, but I just scream like, ah! you know, if I see something. So I could imagine what I would, what I would do. Yeah. You won't well, know unless, you know, come across it. So let us know. <laughs> if I ever play in Australia <laughs> and I see one of them spiders, <laughs> I will let you know. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for being on. This was like a true blessing, like truly. Um, and I appreciate both you and Sid for sharing your stories. Sid for being my co-host today. It was beautiful. Um, Nia, Sid, tell everyone where you can find you on social media. Yeah, where, Nia, where, where are you on? I am on Instagram. I'm working on being better. I, I saw that you only got a, a few you know you are yeah, amazing you people don't person be, you don't have to be but like the I, people obviously would love to hear just you know, be you that. yeah just be you I'm working on that but my handle for Instagram is Nia Coffee I am on Twitter but I don't go on Twitter it's Nia Cop but you know I think that's an area I can grow I can I can grow and be better but yeah that's it <laughs> Okay. Well, it'll be um, in the uh, description. So if anyone wants to go follow you, Sid, what's your, what's your handle? Sweet Baby 24, Instagram, Twitter. And my Snapchat's exclusive, so no <laughs> one can follow them. <laughs> me too. Oh. Same here. Well, if you guys want to follow me, I'm available at Birds Out. That's the podcast mm. episode. Okay. There's so many birds. I just, I don't know. Okay. I'm available on Instagram at Birds of Word underscore 24. On Twitter, I'm Erica McCall24. And if you want to follow the podcast for all updates and some fun facts about Sid, Nia, you can follow us at birdseyeview.podcast on Instagram. Cool. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much. Beautiful. Thank you so beautiful. much, Bird. Everyone have a beautiful day. Thank you, yes. Nia. Um, good luck overseas. She's leaving tomorrow, yes. guys. So thank you for coming on Travel like safely. in the midst of all your packing yeah. and trying to get time in with your family. I really appreciate you being on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was great. Yes. Thank Godspeed, you. Nia. Godspeed. <laughs> Bye. Bye.